if you're like us and you enjoy the sailing part, then I think you need to skew toward a more of a performance cab. And this is the ultimate performance cab. G'day, I'm Brent Fawn from Multi Health Central, and we've got a very special guest here with us today at the marina. It's Seth and the family from the sailing family, an Ultramare 51 that has crossed halfway around the world and now here in Sydney Harbour. We're going to meet with Seth to give us a special tour through what a real blue water cruising catamaran looks like on their Ultramare 51. So uh, let's go and take a look. Hey Brent. Hey Seth. You mind if uh, we come on a board? through? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Show you the boat. All right, so Seth, why don't you tell us briefly how you ended up here in Sydney Harbour on the back of, of an Ultramare 51? Uh, I mean, it's a great question. I don't know how we did it either, to be honest. Um, it was never our plan to even come to Australia, but obviously we bought the Ultramare 51. We actually bought it almost three years ago in the United States. Uh, we're the second owners of this boat. It's seven years old, but still in great shape. And uh, we bought this boat and wanted to sail around the world. You've previously come out of a lagoon catamaran many years ago. You did this, you know, as a, as a test run uh, when you were younger yep, on and on your honeymoon, which is, yep. which is pretty cool. So how did you end up going from a lagoon into a Ultramar 51? Quite different choices of boats. Completely different boats. And I think the answer to that is we were, we were uh, wooed by the appeal of the lagoon, you know, which is a lot of living space and a lot of comfort, kind of comfort first. Um, you know, that's what a lot of the charter cats and the, we call them condo morans. It's, it's not a derogatory term. It's actually, it can be, if that's what you want, if you want a condo on the water, um, that's what those boats are for. Uh, but what we learned was for us anyway, sailing around the world, you, you sail quite a lot actually, and you're only sailing around the world, uh, shocker. And, um, you know, you want a boat that actually can perform a boat that you feel safe in, a boat that, uh, you know when, when you eventually get into that squall, into that storm that you're going to come into, uh, that you feel confident in the boat, and a boat that you feel safe putting your three kids on board. Um, and then a boat maybe that you enjoy to sail and have a little bit of fun with as well. And so, uh, you know, the spectrum of boats kind of goes from, you know, Fenton Bajot and Lagoon and, and Leopard kind of all the way up to where we are today and on the Katanas and the Ultramares and the Sea Winds and the, you know, the Chris Whites and the gunboats. Um, you know, there's that spectrum and I, there's no right or wrong, I don't think, but for us, uh, we learned a lot with that first boat that we didn't like. And when we came to do this again, we wanted to find that boat that was right for us. And for us, that pushed us really more towards the performance category. Um, there's lots of great boats and that, that category seems to be exploding because I think a lot of people are kind of figuring that out. Uh, there's a lot of other people out there like me kind of talking about the advantages and, you know, we, we couldn't be happier being in a performance cat uh, than we are. We, we, time and again, we have been uh, so grateful that we're in this type of a boat. Awesome, so of that category, I guess, of the performance boat, so what was it about the Ultramare that spoke to you as your, as your choice of boat? I mean, that's a great question. Um, we love this boat. This was their, this is a 2014, so this is the first year that they kind of, um, they've, they upgraded their 49 foot model. The 49 footer was a multi-hole of the year award-winning boat. Uh, but then they just improved quite a few more things with this model. Uh, a lot of it was interior design, kind of bringing it up to sort of modern, Euro very European, uh, Scandinavian design, very clean, very light woods, very light uh, walls. Um, but, but more than that, uh, just the small improvements to the boat as well, just a little bit, they extended the transoms a little bit, give it a little more water line, a little bit more speed through the water, a little bit more weight savings uh, improvement. And uh, we, just, we just love this boat. So. Uh, when we looked around at all the boats that were out there, we, we did, we did look at, we looked at Katanas, we looked at um, a Chris White boat, uh, we looked a little bit outside of that spectrum at Antares, we looked at a bunch of brands. Uh, but ultimately it came down to this type of a boat uh, for a lot of reasons. Maybe if we walk around a little bit I can show you some of the reasons why specifically, but this boat sort of ticked all the boxes with us. Yeah, awesome. Well, why don't we do that? Let's okay. take the opportunity for Let's you to actually show us through the boat and, uh, you know, point out, I think, particularly of interest that this is a true blue water boat because you're living on it and you've crossed half, half, you know, halfway around the world now. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's have a look. Well, we don't have to go far either because I think the first, the first thing we loved about the boat was just where we're sitting because it's so protected. A lot of cats just, this is clean, you know, flat floor off to the back. And this boat, as you sit here in this cockpit, you feel very safe. No one's fallen off the back of this boat. And for us, again, with three young boys aboard, you want to make sure that everyone's safe. And so this cockpit felt super safe for us. And well, you're right, that's a big high, you know, transom here. You got all your main sheet and traveler and everything out the back. You don't sort yeah. of come anywhere near it, do you? And yeah. 
Yeah, the Traveler as well, you know, it's not on the coach roof. So uh, from just a strength perspective, this is a much better way to control your mainsail, but also just build a, a more robust boat. And then you can also see these curtains that we have. You know, these curtains are fantastic. They drop down completely around us. So when it's raining or it's cold, we can drop all these curtains and then this room stays dry and warm. And, and again, safe. You can, there's no way you're getting off the boat if the curtains are drawn. So our, our boys actually sleep underway. They love it. One of the things they love about passages is that we let them sleep out here. So uh, Reese sleeps here and Hale, our, our nine-year-old and our 10-year-old sleeps over on that side. And we let them listen to an audio story on, on, as they're kind of falling asleep because they're helping me with watch. And they love it. They love sleeping out here. And we're, we're perfectly happy with them doing that underway because of how safe the boat is. Come on inside. Let's take a look inside. Um, this is the, the salon in the Trimmer 51. Um, normally you have a table here, uh, but we actually love leaving it dropped like this. Uh, it turns into kind of a bit of a sofa. And then it's actually a night berth as well. So when we're underway, we were just talking about how the, where the kids sleep. You know, I can kind of nap here if Elizabeth's on watch or vice versa, but we're both kind of up here in the middle of the boat, super comfortable right on the mast, right in the middle of the boat. Um, and, uh, and then you have everything you need here. So we actually spend all of our time at the nav table. You know, I'll sit here. Um, you've got, I've got my nav controls here with the remote so I can control all the angle all the um, autopilot controls on the computer. We have an NMEA connection, so we run a time zero software which shows us all the charts, but then also the wind data. So we can, uh, with that, we can, we can actually uh, uh, download grid files and forecast with our uh, particular polars for this boat and uh, predict our, our, our course. So all that data is here. Um, wind, of course, uh, temperature, weather. This is our battery control. Uh, uh, satellite phone, and then of course we have our, our your, your VHF, which is beeping at me, and then a single sideband radio on this boat. So everything's right here. And having it forward facing, obviously you've got good visibility around you. and We've got great visibility forward. You can see kind of, you know, where you're going, you can look for lights. You can just sit here comfortably under watch and um, control the boat from here. Excellent. And so in the rest of the saloon, we've got uh, obviously your galley and yeah, uh, great galley, three burners, you know, uh, gas oven on this boat. You can get electric, I believe, as an option if you wanted to. Uh, two sinks, you can have a salt water pump and fresh water for uh, water management. The boats all come with a water maker, uh, which does 100 liters an hour on 12 volts. It's a great system. Um, so we're really happy with, with this boat. What we're here talking about, I guess, your nav equipment and electronics. What about uh, solar, batteries? What's your power management system look like? Yeah, uh, when we bought the boat, it came with kind of with the stock solar setup, which I think was fine for the original two owners, but with five of us on board, five kids opening the fridge and keeping the door open and looking in there what they want and letting all the cold air out, um, you know, we needed a little bit more power. So we just, uh, we, we installed a larger solar array in the back uh, and we put 500 additional watts in the Bimini. I mean, it's a catamaran, there's so much space for solar and we don't have a generator and we don't need one. So we can run our water maker two, three hours a day uh, especially in the tropics, um, but even here right now, you know, we're at we're at 100% right now. Um, the bat in the, we leave the inverter on all the time, so we're constantly charging laptops and toys and and cameras, and you know, the the, the battery system's kind of it's finally the technology's there. Or it's real simple, and we don't even have lithium-ion batteries. We just have AGM, AGM gels. So um, it's a great system. So that was 500 watts on the on the roof. You recall what you got out? Yeah, we have 1260 on the davits wow. and then 500 on, on the roof. All right. Okay. It's, it's up there. Plenty. Yeah. So and uh, so no gen set. So as far as demands on your power system, obviously you got your your nav gear. You got your fridges and freezers. Yep. Um, on this boat, we actually have we installed an extra freezer. So we've got uh, the fridge and the freezer that you see here. And then uh, we added an extra angle freezer down below, just so underway, you know, on a long passage, we can fill it with, with chicken breasts and steaks yeah. and, and go. Excellent. And then probably uh, electric winches. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we have electric winches. This yeah. boat actually has four electric winches. Um, and so uh, underway, we are obviously running your auto helm as well. Uh, and then uh, we don't have any wind, but we do have a hydro generator, which has been fantastic. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. yeah. So under passage, maybe sucking in a little bit more power. Well, it's really at night. So at night, obviously, your solar doesn't work. Um, so the what the, I would say the hydro kind of keeps us where we are. So during the day, no problem at all with with running all the systems at once, even underway. 
electric winches and everything. Um, but then at night, you know, just to keep it things sort of topped up, the hydro generator is, is really good. And so earlier we talked about the hydro generator. Um, it's got this dedicated locker here in the back. So this locker on the starboard side would be for the swim ladder, uh, but here it, it perfectly fits the hydro generator. So this just comes out, slides on a, on a track on the back of the transom, and then we drop that in the water. And at night that keeps us powered up. This is the uh, owner's hall on this one. So we've got a queen size bed in the back here. Um, this boat bed, I believe you, on uh, all Ultramares, you have a choice between kind of, if you want it or, uh, one way or the other. Um, but we like this layout because you kind of keep your balance a little bit more underway. Um, and then uh, you've got the privacy door that you're standing right by there, Brent. Yep. Close that. So that uh, if you've got three kids on board, uh -huh. it's nice to close them off sometimes. And then uh, Elizabeth's closet. I've been relegated to the other side uh, with the boys. So this is all Elizabeth space, uh, but you know, tons of closet space here. You've got you know four cupboards there, another one there, another one in the in the actual stateroom itself. Do you run a uh, washing machine? We don't run a washing machine, no. so uh, you you can put one in the other hall, uh, in the other shower, but we don't have one on this boat. Uh, so we just find uh, laundry mats wherever we go. Yeah. They're they're everywhere in the world. Yeah. So here's the daggerboard casing. Um, so, you know, a lot of people will complain that a daggerboard might take up a lot of room in the hallway. It feels like there's plenty of room here for yeah, us and, yeah. and I'd rather have the daggerboard. And then in here, of course, is the, the owner's head. Uh, important for me is a tall, I mean, I'm six foot three, so I'm quite tall. And, uh, you know, to be able to stand in the shower is, is kind of a nice feature. All right, so uh, my wife calls this the hull of despair because <laughs> my, uh, my kids are in here. This is kind of their hall, but um, you know it's a it's a mirror of the of the owner's cabin on this side. So you've got another queen berth over here, uh, and all the closets and storage space. And then on this hall, instead of the owner's hall, you have a, a shower here, which we converted to a closet and a freezer. And then this boat has the the bunk bed set up, so uh, one kid can sleep here. And if you if you don't want this, you can actually fold it up and, and just make it the normal twin that's up here. So lots of sleeping space. Yeah, so this is the helm. Um, on this boat, we've got uh, one electric winch and all Antel gear and one manual. Uh, the same on the other side, and then another uh, electric winch here in the, co in the cockpit. And you know, the great, it's a great helm. It's protected in this case. So this is an aftermarket Bimini that, that Utremer put on. A lot of owners are starting to choose to have this option because you obviously you want to stay in the shade in the tropics. But then even sailing here, when you know, it's, it's been raining quite a bit here in Sydney, and, uh, we've been pretty happy to have this, this protection that keeps us dry and out of, the, out of the sun. But yeah, you can control everything here. This is where we raise the main and control the main sheet, uh, control the geno sheets. Uh, we have separate leach and luff uh, reefing lines, uh, so we can, we can even reef the boat going downwind. And uh, you know, every, all, the, all the lines come back here. We have no reason to go to the mast actually at all unless we're you know, flying a kite or hoisting a, a spinnaker. So you were saying before that you know this boat suits people that like to sail, you like to do a lot of sailing. So why don't we talk a little bit more about sail choice and maybe how you've got the sail set up on the boat. Sure. Uh, yeah, well the, the first thing, kind of the Outremer DNA brand thing is this. So if you love to sail, and you know I used to race kind of keel boats and you, know, you, love, you want to have a tiller. So here's a tiller seat and it's got one on each side. Uh, so you can sit here, you can look at your telltales, you can, you can trim right up to the point where you're pinching up wind and control the boat from here. And there's even a lever that disconnects the steering wheel. So you can just have direct connect uh, control, manual control to the, to the rudders. And you can feel if you have a weather helm. So there's not many catamarans of this size where you can do that. So it's kind of a fun, really fun feature, especially when racing. Um, so there's really three places to control the boat from. And then up front, uh, we've got all our sails. So up here is the my favorite part of the tour. This is kind of all the sails and the sail planning. And I mean, the first thing you notice right away is just the huge trampoline. So this just tells you it's a performance cat. Uh, I think our lagoon had you know a tiny one meter trampoline in comparison. And what that does is it just brings all the weight aft because you really want the weight under the mass as best you can. So all the fuel, uh, the batteries, and all the weight is kind of centrally located under the midship part of the boat. Uh, and then these, this obviously the length of the water line gives you speed. Uh, and then also removes a lot of that hobby horsing effect that catamarans are kind of famous for. So 
they kind of say you should buy a cat over 44 feet or so because that kind of is where that sweet spot is but at 51 feet this boat really is quite comfortable uh, underway uh, and then sail wise we've got uh, a rather large uh, mainsail uh, square top mainsail this boat has the stay sail option so this is a carbon longeron uh, and what that allows you to do is it, it gives you the strength to put in a stay sail so this is a a hanked on jib that goes to the self-tacking track right there behind you, uh, Brent. And uh, it's just a small small sail that keeps the center of effort you know, right in the middle of the boat again. So if you're heavily reefed or you're going up wind, you know, this boat will kind of quickly get, you know, likes to go 10 knots. So if you've got 15 knots of wind, all of a sudden you've got 25 knots of apparent wind and you should be reefed. You shouldn't have a full Genoa out. And if you want to pinch and still sail comfortably, you want to reduce sail area, but keep the sail area in the center of the boat. And so that's what the stay sail does. So that's a great feature. And then the other thing with the, with the carbon Lingeron is you get the 110% Genoa. So our Genoa will come all the way back to here to these tracks. So the, this, this is actually trimmed right now for kind of upwind sailing. So the, the Genoa will actually come right to about here. So uh, quite a big head sail on the boat. Uh, and then you can imagine on a reach or a run, uh, that extra sail area really you know, helps you get that boat back up to 10 knots, even though you're kind of going with the wind. So in wind conditions, um your stay sail option, when would you be flying that typically? So I, I won't lie, it's, it's not the easiest sail to rig and to hoist and to bring back down. So we really kind of only rig it when we're going offshore and we're expecting, you know, headwinds. Uh, but if that's, if we're ever going offshore in those conditions, we try not to, but if we do, uh, it, it's happened, unfortunately more than you'd like, uh, then we rig it and it's ready to go. And, and if we find the wind is, you, know, if we, you can actually feel again with the helm and, and the tillers, you can feel if the boat's, you know, out of balance. And that's when you think, okay, well, I need to reef or I need to, you know, reduce some sail area. So what are you like talking like 20 knots plus, 15 knots plus? Uh, well, actually on this boat, um, the reefing plan is the first reef is at 18 knots, the second reef is at 21 knots, and the third reef is about 24 knots. Um, I find that that's probably on the conservative side. I and mean, what we've learned over time, as all owners learn, is, you know, when you, when you reduce sail area and you're still kind of going the same speed you were before, but you have less sail out, then that was the right time to reef. So we find 18 is probably right for the first reef. The main is so big uh, and the first reef doesn't take out too much. We actually find we almost always, when we even put up the sail, we kind of almost start with one reef automatically uh, just because the boat does kind of quickly get up to those apparent wind speeds. Uh, but then with the stay sail, you know, that again, if we're, if we're going up wind and we're over 20, then you'd want the stay sail option. So, you know, if the apparent winds are 23, 25, Again, it's really simple if it's, you know, typically it's 15 knots of wind out there in the, in the tropics and in the trade winds. And if you're going up wind at all, you know, you're quickly at, you know, over 23, 24, 25 knots of wind. Yeah. yeah. But typically the Genoa, I imagine, gets, gets used a lot. Oh, the Genoa, you know, the Genoa is great. And, you know, obviously it's on a furler as well. So, you know, it is infinitely reefable itself. You know, if, from a purist standpoint, you don't have the best shape if you, if you furl it. So that's why you've got the stay sail option. Uh, but you, you can furl the Genoa as well, just if you needed to quite quickly reef, you can yeah. do that. Yeah. And the stay sail, in terms of the actual uh, stay that it's on, that's removable, right? Yeah, so that, um, you know, for, especially racing and tacking with the Genoa upwind, you want to be able to get that out of the way so that the Genoa can tack around. Uh, so that you can ease the a block down here with this yellow line, and that entire stay sail uh, forestay comes and attaches back to the mast. So you can, you can put this, you can stow the sail in the sail locker. You can get this, this stay sail, uh, four stay out of the way. Uh, it's just like, you know, any other boat you've ever sailed on, but without the stay sail. Okay. And what about extra sails? Uh, so the extra sails, uh, this boat came with, I think a great sail plan. It's got a uh, reacher uh, or a Jenniker. Uh, a lot of people call it a code zero, but it's really kind of a really flat cut sail. Uh, and then it's, it's got the option with the, with this carbon Longeron, you can really hang down. On, on the halyard and that and, you know get the force state quite tight and that allows you actually to sail upwind with with a large uh, spinnaker sail type you know asymmetrical sail uh, so with that sail we can sail anywhere from 60 degrees upwind and really it's a light air sail so it's kind of an ounce and a half inch uh, ounce and a half that uh, thick fabric and that weight allows you in light air that sail kind of comes all the way back to that helm seat I was sitting in earlier you know it's a huge flat sail but with that, you can, again, even in light air, kind of almost match wind speeds. So, you know, if there's 10 knots of wind, you know, on my lagoon, I couldn't sail. You know, on this boat, you can sail. And at 10 knots, you're going eight knots. 
Um, so you're almost reaching true wind speeds. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And it really opens up those lower wind speeds, I guess. Then, so. It does. I mean, I think going back to the difference between um, you know, charter cats and, and performance cats, I mean, those are the big, that's the big difference for me is you can sail in light air and you can sail upwind. And so you find yourself sailing all the time. And light wind sailing is actually the most enjoyable sailing. If you can go eight knots and the seas are flat, that's, that's like my favorite type of sailing there yeah. is. You know, it's yeah. a wine and cheese day. Uh, so you're out there and you're, you're, you know, our friends are all motoring to the next island and, and we're, they think we're crazy to be off tacking into the wind to, to get, try and get there, but we're, we're having a blast. And the family are happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then our, our fifth sail on this boat is a symmetrical spinnaker. Uh, and that's a great sail. So, you know, we're talking about light wind sailing. You know, what you, what you dream about when you're sailing around the world is the wind's always behind you and you're kind of going with the wind, with the waves. And that's what that, that uh, kite is really for. So we can sail either with the main up uh, or just with spinnaker alone and just go really down, you know, 180 degrees downwind with that sail. That's again, a real lightweight sail, but 108, you know, it's a real wide sail. We, we run two guys off the bows and then two sheets that go back to the, to the uh, cockpit for control. Uh, and we can, we can move that around and sail as we need to. And then in terms of storage for the sail locker, um, obviously the, with these long bows, you get huge storage. So in here we have, where well, we store our, the reacher. So the reacher, if you come over here, actually I'll just climb in here and show you how much room there is. So in here you've got um, you know, a ladder to get down, but then here's where we, we keep our reacher sail. So our reacher sort of stows up nicely here. Uh, the stay sail normally will go here under where the kites are, uh, but then you can see just all the toys in here as well. Um, we've got, I just counted it earlier today, we've got uh, seven kites for kite surfing. We've got two um, kite boards. We've got two foils. We've got three boogie boards. We've got two surfboards. Uh, and then all, this, all the lines that you need to run the boat. Uh, and then kite harnesses. You know, there's so much room in here uh, to store all the toys and all the sail gear that you need to sail around the world. Awesome. All right, so the other thing just to mention about the sail locker is that, you know, these boats are designed to sail around the world. In fact, I think Utremer's, you know, brand mantra is for the boat to be able to sail around the world multiple times. But so with that in mind, you, know, you have to worry about safety and collision at sea. So you know, this whole uh, sail locker, it's worth mentioning, it can be sealed off from the rest of the boat. So it's really kind of a crash locker. And in fact, there's even a shelf there that's um, got foam inside. So if you were to hit something, you're gonna hit it at the water line. You know, that also protects uh, the rest of the boat. So you know, it's really designed for sailing around the world. And that entire storage has also got another sealed bulkhead right. from the rest of your accommodation as well. Right, right. So. exactly. Okay, and then uh, earlier we were talking about weight under the mass. This is the fuel tanks, uh, and then we use it to keep our jerry cans as well. Uh, you actually don't need the jerry cans. We, we go three or four months, you know, minimum before we're filling up usually, because you're usually sailing, because you can sail lighter. Well, that's a big point, right? I mean, you're probably using less fuel because you're spending more time with the sails up. Completely. Um, so I, the jerry cans are actually really just for kind of when you get really in the sticks and there isn't a fuel dock and you need to, you, you know, go in your dinghy to shore to the gas station to get fuel. Uh, so that's kind of really the only reason for the jerry cans. Which is an interesting thing to sort of highlight though, because sometimes you can't always get fuel right. from a dockside right. when you're in these remote locations. Yeah, and the two motus, they don't have docks. So uh, you, you kind of do need to, that ability to kind of do that. But sorry, so we filled up in Panama. Uh, we went to the Galapagos. We got lucky and, and didn't get caught in the ITCZ. So we went to the, uh, the Galapagos, spent three weeks there, sailed all the way to Tahiti, and we still had uh, full fuel tanks. So with the jerry cans we'd filled up in Panama, uh, these tanks were full. So we then cruised for three more months in, in uh, French Polynesia and didn't need fuel for like half a year. Pretty amazing. Uh, so obviously, uh, like your fuel tanks and batteries and things are fairly centralized on the boat yeah. uh, for weight distribution? Yeah. You know, the boat, as we were talking about earlier with the, with the length of the bow, you know, it's a, it's a 15 meter boat and it's also got, I think it's 7.2 meters beam. So it's quite a wide boat as well. Uh, and what that really does get you again is a very comfortable platform. So you're not really hobby horsing. And then all performance cats, you know, they, they're, you're not going to find a flybridge on a performance cat. It's all about weight kind of low under the mast, uh, not high up on the bimini and you don't want your boom up high and losing all the sail area. So as you can see right here on this boat, you know, the boom is nice and low. Uh, we still have room for our toys with our, our kids sailing dinghy here. Uh, but you know, all Ultramares come with the carbon bimini, or all 51s do at least, uh, and 5Xs. Um, but the, you know, even the bimini is, is carbon. So there's certain elements in the boat that are carbon to try to keep that weight 
down low and, and to keep the boat from rocking and hobby horsing is like a lot of the, you know, the charter cats and condom brands well. And so what about, uh, you know, payload? Because, you know, the argument yeah. is, can you take, you know, sufficient payload on a, on a performance cat when you're yeah. going blue water cruising? Yeah, thankfully kite gear is pretty light. But uh, no, you know, it's a great question. I think, um, I think it really depends on you again as a sailor and how, what you want and how you want to set it up. You know, with this boat, um, we've done a very good job of overloading this boat, probably well beyond the spec, uh, but the boat isn't sinking down below its water line. Um, in fact, we've been quite pleased with the performance and um, you know, we've loaded up dinghies and we've got scuba tanks and scuba gear. Um, there's five of us and children's books, you, know, that you name it, we've got kind of all the toys we could want on this boat and we've been pleasantly surprised with the performance. You know, and even last night racing the boat with, what do we have, like 10 people on board or 11 people on board, um, we still did pretty well. So I, I think it almost goes more to, you know, you're paying for carbon options. This is a carbon reinforced Longeron. If you're gonna start putting a carbon rig on and you're gonna really, you know, plus up all the carbon options, then maybe you shouldn't load it up with lots of heavy stuff because you've just paid a fortune for all those carbon options. Uh, but if you're if you've got the aluminum mast and you're not worried about every you know point one point two knots of speed difference, I think it's it really kind of comes down to that that minimal of a difference. So you've really got a, a good comprehensive sail package and sail wardrobe to give you the power to get the boat going. That too. But that you, too. but you haven't like it's not a super super lightweight boat in terms of all the carbon options picked. So you're right. still able to get sufficient power into the boat to make it move and. It, I would say more than sufficient. I mean, one of the other advantages of the performance category, catamaran category is that you don't have to force the boat, you know, push the boat with a lot of sail area. In fact, you kind of, at some point, you don't want to go 10, 11, 12 knots into, you know, heavy waves. At some point it gets too uncomfortable. And so the ability to reduce the sail area and still kind of go, you know, in a good eight, nine, 10 knots and do it more comfortably when the seas do get rough, you know, that's, that's a great option. Yeah, and it's just on performance. I mean, some people misconceive that, you know, a performance catamaran is about trying to go 20 knots all the time, but that's right. not really the case, is it? No, I mean, I, uh, it's not at all. I think it's about, um, you know, going at comfortable speed where the boat is in balance. You're not pushing the rig, you're, you're not worried about breaking something, uh, but you are still clocking kind of a lot more miles than you normally would. So we used to do 150 nautical miles a day on our lagoon. And on this boat, we plan for 200 to 220, depending on the wind conditions. So that's a huge difference. So we did 15 days crossing the Pacific Ocean in this boat versus 20 in our last boat. That's wow. a five day wow. difference at sea. And that's and then, really what it's converting to, isn't right. it? It's time out in the ocean bobbing around. And, and there's been multiple times where we've kind of just made it in before dark. And whereas before we would have had to slow the boat up and you know, spend a whole nother night at sea and you're, you're exposed to more squalls or more, you know, another front that's coming. Um, so on, on a lot of times we've been lucky to escape, you know, you can't, outrunning the storm might be a bit of a myth, but you can, you know, because of the miles you've been putting in, you might get in before the storm. And so we've, we've had experiences like that where other boats and other friends are caught at sea and we're, we're inside drinking margaritas. <laughs>So in here, uh, another thing that's nice actually is a lot of cats, you have the engine right underneath the bed. Uh, so you gotta take all the bedding away to get access to the engine. Uh, and then back here, it's kind of a little quieter. You're not sleeping on top of it. And then you've got great access inside here as well. So you've got here in this engine room, we've got our electric drive autopilot, uh, the manual linkage to the steering, and then great access to the engine. If you'd like to download an information kit on the Ultramare 51, click here. To watch other videos on the Ultramare range, click here. And don't forget to subscribe.